Campus Colab, para você trabalhar. Greetings everyone, welcome to Heart Center. Your Tuesday night show bringing you some of the best matches in THL or the results of some of the best matches in THL. I am Lotus Knight. I am one of your hosts for tonight. And I am joined by some of the best squad THL has to offer. First of all, starting on our top right corner, he's been with me every show this season. The one and only Super Chicken, whose favorite card is the Angry Chicken. How are you doing, Chicken? Right? It's the day I don't want to think too much of what's going to happen. Um, that's true. I will have to figure out which ones are still in standard because I do not remember. Um, second, we have directly from Australia. He's in our top left corner here. Yeah, I think I got it right. Top left. Um, We have the head of APM Esports at this point. I'm sure they're an, organ an esport organization by now. Um, his favorite card is the Lurker below. We have Bone Masher. Nice. <laughs> Nice. And last but not least, on our bottom left corner, he did arrive right as we were going to go live on stream. Um, wait, is my audio, did I miss, mess audio one second? I did mess audio. Okay, I will fix it and say hello to everyone again really quick. So, hi, Chicken. Hello. Uh, hi, Bone Masher. Hi. And last but not least, hi, Justin, whose favorite card is Conviction. Oh, why is my favorite card Conviction? I'd love I to mean, know. you play a lot of Paladin, I'm sure. Aggro Paladin. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's definitely me. Yeah? <laughs> I, think uh, I, I think I've played Paladin to THL once in the past <laughs> two seasons. <laughs> <laughs> and Paladin has been in a decent spot. True. Uh, and I, I won the one week I submitted, so uh, maybe maybe I should submit more often. Yeah, uh, as a See? wise wise man once said, uh, <laughs> conviction battleground battlemaster on turn mm. five is the way Hearthstone was meant to be played. That is true. That's true. I miss no, I do not miss conviction. Um, thank you, Desharmo, for the three year sub. Wow. Thank you, Ducharmo, for supporting THL. Um, I mean, you're on the board, so I don't even know if I need to say that, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, I apologize for the small audio issues, but I believe it should be all set now. Uh, we have quite a lot to cover, so everyone ready to just hop in? Yeah, yeah let's go for it. Awesome. So we're going to start with our Players of the Week, and to announce our Hero Player of the Week, We have Bone Masher. Okay, so our Hero Player of the Week this week is Quaz. Uh, in a late Saturday match uh, to wrap the week, Quaz came away with a narrow 3-2 victory to push Korak City over the line 13-12 against the defending champions. Quaz keeping the momentum going for, uh, going for this team that just picked up its second win in a row. Well done, Quaz. Yep, congratulations, Quaz, on winning Player of the Week. And he is joined by a very special Legacy Player of the Week that's going to be announced by Super Chicken. Yeah, so our Legacy Player of the Week is Steffi. Uh, Steffi nabbed her first win of the season last week against the previously undefeated Wicked Good with a resounding 3-0 score as well. Absolutely huge timing for her and her team as this <coughs> resulted in a nice 14-10 win For her team as well. Even got our hat to say, oh, I don't know what that emote is, but I'll post it in chat. Sure. <laughs> Greater than colon three. Huh. Yeah, I have no idea what that means, but it did get our hat to say that. That's true. <laughs> Huge. 
Um, our final player of the week is our pro player of the week. Justin, do you want to tell us who it is? You might know this one. Yeah, sure, I've, I've heard of the guy. Uh, German Klepp came in huge for the boys, fighting through adversity and a difficult matchup, taking a 3-0 victory and securing the week. The clutch closer did it in style, and as a teammate states, <laughs> a teammate who I think I know, <laughs> the big dog is here, and Pink Series is his yard. <laughs> Pink be wary, because the Shep is scary. <laughs> yeah. A uh, really strong showing by Quaz, Steffi, and Shep. And I always find it fun when I see these players who've been in THL for even longer than I have, and they're still getting Player of the Week and still performing amazing. So congratulations to all three of these. And for everyone, congratulations to everyone who won their matches as well, because we all know you deserve congratulations after a tough match. Uh, that said, should we talk about Maniac Mondays to just quickly review the winners of yesterday's tournament? No, we could probably go next. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's true, I just want to know that Diamond and Neji Boston showed their standard duo skills and brought a win with their lineup consisting of Mozaki Mage, Thief Rogue, and I believe their final deck was Handlock. Beating in the semi in the finals, Nice Jewish Owl and Dabs, which is also a stacked team. So I want to congratulate Diamond and Neji. Does anyone have anything they want to say about Maniac Mondays? Um, or specifically this Maniac Monday that happened yesterday? I'm there was sure a lot of interesting decks. Sorry. Uh, go there was a lot of I was saying, there's a lot of interesting decks. I, um, yeah, I, I got to see some decks I haven't seen played, which was good when I tuned in. Yeah. Uh, Justin, sure what did you want to say? Wondering which of Diamond's uh, people, Western Canadian BC uh, players he's co opted with to decent tournament showings <laughs> is the better player. If only there there is a way that we can find <laughs> out that they're, they're playing each other or something. I don't know. Uh, true. That's true. Uh, uh, maybe we'll get that special match one of these days. <laughs> maybe a few days from now who knows who knows <laughs> um interesting thing though if you watch yesterday you saw quaz's charge warrior he missed the uh killing his opponent on turn eight which he could have done but he wanted to be nice and he charged face a mozaki mage on turn nine to otk mozaki mage when they had double flow on turn three and four i believe which was just, it's like, I don't like watching people lose, but I really enjoy watching Mizaki Mage fail, because that deck is awful. True. Yeah. Um, but that said, I believe that is it for, us, for our warm-up into Maniac Mondays. Everyone ready to hop into Hero Series? Yep. Awesome. So to open us up, we're going to talk about Teal Conference. Uh, Bone Masher, do you want to go over what's going on in Teal? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so in Teal Conference, at the top, we've got no pros here on 78 points with a 4-0 and <laughs> record. Uh, make a 5 seed out of a mole hole is on 64 points. The Unknown on 59. Hordy on Main and APM Yang on 55 points. Korak City on 54, and Booty Bay Yacht Club holding up the rest of the conference on 49 points. But um, there's not much in it between second and last in that conference, so still a lot to play for. Yeah. This it's interesting, because other than NPH, it really looks like everyone still might get there or not. I mean... Do you think it's too early to say NPH is guaranteed Bone Masher, or would you? Do you think NPH is a very safe bat at this point? I think they're probably a lock. Um, I like NPH. I like the uh, the team that they've got. I think they're one of the strongest teams. Also, there's uh, eight out of fourteen teams make it, so you'd have to probably be 
down in fifth place, which I suppose is still possible, but you know, having that twenty point gap on on fifth there, I think they're, they're right. probably probably far enough ahead now that they even if they lost every match, they they might still stick in. So I, I'd say they're a lock. Now to talk about a conference that's having a different behavior, Justin, why don't you tell us what's going on in purple? Sure. So, uh, like uh, NPH and Teal, uh, we're absolutely smoking everyone. Golden West just seemed like, how does this team exist? I, I, I don't know. Uh, played them week one. I, looking at the replays from their five seed, I, I, I don't think I've seen a five seed play better. He was playing out of his mind. Uh, very tight technical play. Uh, and that's not to mention that their top four seeds, their one through four, have all been top 200 on the leaderboard <laughs> at some point <laughs> yeah. in the past month. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're averaging 20 points a week, which uh, will, will indeed put you top. Uh, APN Yin with Fair. 17 and a half points per week, which would be good for first place in many seasons, but not quite enough now. Uh, <laughs> clearly, uh, those two teams have not played each other yet, uh, but I mean, I would still expect them to, to, to be near the top even after they do. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the rest of the pack f filling out. One interesting thing is, like Bone Masher said, eight out of 14 teams make playoffs. However, it's either I'm misremembering how it was in the past or it's different because the top three from each conference are locked and then it's the next two highest point total teams. So it could be a situation uh, in which five teams from one conference make it and only three from another make it if one top team oh, or one conference is beating up the other in cross-conference scheduling a lot because there's a nine-week season and three out of the nine weeks, a full third, is cross-conference. I, get, I think it may have been you, Bone Master, specifically, you mentioned how Teal really was beating up Purple uh, in the first of the cross-conference weeks we've had. And you can see that in the standings. Just Teal teams are, are quite inflated compared to Purple. Uh, <laughs> seventh place, or sorry, second to last place in Teal, uh, sixth out of seven would be much, much higher in Purple. They'd be in uh, four out of seven. Uh, so hmm. it may end up being that five out of the, the eight come from Teal. That is very interesting, actually. Now, I think it's a cool behavior to see how these conferences are having just one conference seems a lot more even other than one team, while the other conference, there's clearly a linear behavior between teams. Now, let's start talking with one of, about one of the shiny teams. Uh, Bone Masher, do you want to tell us about NPH versus the Unknown? Uh, yeah, so uh, NPH versus The Unknown. Uh, the Unknown is a team that I, if you listen to the podcast, was I uh, had great raps on them at the start of the season, the team that uh, Deshamo put together, and he's even managed to put Heat Shock in the one. Um, but they they got taught a lesson this week. So, um, no pros here, put a stamp on top spot. Uh, Agent PWE uh, coming up with a 3-1 over Heat Shock. Uh, Magnificent managed to get a win for the unknown in the two, uh, three two over Skittles, but then in the three and the four, your Mumkit and Pasca full swept Chili and Thalfix, and um, and Clarity got a a three two over Gymphalos, which is not an easy thing to do. Definitely um, so not. So yeah, a, a big win for no pros here this week, and 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 more importantly, I think for the unknown, like not picking up a lot of points, like you know you pick up another three or four points even there and 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 you you're up level with make a, a five set of a mole hole but you know that keeps them sort of down in the pack mm -hmm. yeah uh justin what do you think of nph versus the unknown anything you want to add here to what bone Master said I mean, it's pretty much what Mo bone Master said completely three two undefeated teams came in and only one could go out uh, True. That, that seemed Kiwi Skittles Ked and like a competent four and five C that they didn't break break, break the entire PR budget just on that top trio is is pretty crazy for NPH. But yeah, Unknown, at least on paper, have quite the squad as well, uh, and just just couldn't. <laughs> there could only be one one winner on this day. Mm hmm. That's true. Yeah, I think uh, the the biggest difference for NP or difference maker, I guess, for NPH has been. Uh, clarity so far i think he's having a bit of a, a breakout season here um yeah. you know and especially this week week having a bit of success i mean he's two and two in pro right now um i mean having lost to um, some three and two 
Yeah, true. Uh, after he beats me this week in pro. But yeah, I mean, he's been in the one seed for, I think, uh, most of the, the weeks in pro so far. So he's, And he's still managed to go two and two so far, which is pretty impressive as a 50 PR player. Yeah. Um, and also uh, to beat Skirt Reynolds in Legacy this week, which is uh, also quite impressive as Skirt is arguably the, the best fives seed mm. uh, in THL. Um, so yeah, Clarity's been doing really, really well for himself this season. Nice. It's fun to see Clarity um, do this well. I've, I don't even remember when we played together. We played together a few times, and I think he's a way better player than his PR may indicate. That being said, I'll keep us moving to our second hero match, where Justin is going to tell us about his team that had... I think we can say a close call against LeBran. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of absent last week, so I wasn't paying attention to other people's matches that much. But it it looks like we won. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the based on stream. It was a very funny match because other than game one, the, the, the decks that were unfavored on paper won every single time. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, like, yeah, like, when you have 55, 45s, like, six, even 60, 40s in our still, I mean, 40% of the time, my favorite deck wins. Like, you, you just, any sort yeah. of draw or any sort of mistakes, because I, I don't think either of us played all that cleanly. Uh, and gee, what, what you bring doesn't matter all that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you spend That's all fair. this time strategizing about opponents' brings, and then, eh, you just, just get thrown out a window when four out of five of the games are won by the unfavored deck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I was allergic to drawing my Vipers in games one and two against Terry Doom Hammer Shaman, and then I was very good at drawing Flow and Mozaki early in the, the rest <laughs> of the games on Mage. Uh, huh. And the yeah, I see re resulting down uh, three twos from our guys in the two through four, and then Super Buckles in the five taking the L on stream, but securing a game win to to bring our team out with the win for the week. Uh, you're, I guess, Chicken, do you want to talk about uh, one of the matches in particular? I hear you know a bit more than me about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the, the two-seed match, Turtle versus Nails, is a little bit interesting. Um, the match started off 2-0 for Nails in a pretty unconventional way. Um, so I believe in the first game, uh, Turtle lost to... Uh, got a default loss to one of the Maestra rules. I believe he did not uh, declare Maestra at the start of the game. Oh. Um, so he lost that game. And then game two, uh, like, okay, so on on the uh, the page here, it's, it's the ban is incorrectly stated because Turtle submitted the results wrong, but Nails had actually banned Turtle's mage, mm. and Turtle queued the mage game two. Um, oh. So that put him down 0-2. Uh, and then Turtle reverse swept Nails uh, with just Paladin left. Uh, huh. So, uh, that, yeah. Um, I guess. He played, I believe he played Paladin versus Warlock and won that. Um, and then in in the second game, it was Mozaki Mage versus Libram Paladin. And Nails drew flow on uh, turn two and turn three. Uh, and then still lost because his next like five draws were just like, Mana Biscuit, Mana Biscuit, something like that. Uh, yeah, and then in game five, I believe it was the Quest Druid versus uh, the Libram Paladin, which is not a great matchup for the, the Quest Druid, so uh, Turtle no. was able to close out the series that way. But yeah, <laughs> pretty interesting stuff. Um, maybe yeah. would Turtle have swept had he not, uh, <laughs> you know, d made some, you know, clerical errors? Maybe. But, yeah, it was pretty interesting, to say the least. That's actually fascinating, the fact that you can actually just lose two matches and still win. Um, congrats to Turtle. If we didn't have a player of the week, I would suggest Turtle after this one. But um, I think it's fine, given that it was against Nails. Yeah, now, I mean, Nails kind of continuing to to struggle a bit this season in both, uh, well, in in Hero 
and I, I think in Legacy as well a little bit. Um, yeah. Just hasn't been able to find uh, the wins that he's kind of accustomed to. But yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, some some unfortunate draws, but I remember him saying he wasn't too happy with his play overall either. But I, I'm sure he'll pick it up at some point. Oh, yeah. We're talking about a great player. I think it's just a matter of time until he's fully back. Um, any final thoughts on at Diamond at Diamond versus LeBran before you hop on to our final hero match of the night? Awesome. So, Chicken, why don't you tell us about F2L Black versus APM Yang? Yeah, we get to talk about a whole, three whole hero matches this week. So, APM Yang uh, ended up falling to F2L Black uh, 10 to 15. Uh, in the one seed, Genji continuing his uh, amazing start <laughs> to the season, uh, taking it 3 1 over Neji and helping Neji continue his terrible start to the season. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in the two, we had Rebob continuing his winning streak with a sweep over Jammies. Itachi also getting the sweep for F2L Black over KSW. Uh, and then we have Wi-Fair taking it 3-2 over Shu. And in the 5C, we had Fish continuing his winning streak, taking it 3-2 over Nomad Farmer. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you, Bone Masher, as head of APM Esports, um... What do you think of this match here? Anything in particular that calls your attention? Uh, I think Genji's doing a great job in the one seed. Um, he even rolled over this week because he missed the, the cutoff for, to submit his decks. He was going to change it up. but um, So he rolled over. <laughs> and then he forgot to ban when he submitted his screenshot. Oh. Um, but he still managed to win, even though he was up against any four decks um, against Neji. So... He, I think he's doing really great. Like I know, like it took him nice. forever to find their one seed, um, but yeah, Genji's been fantastic. Um, so I mean, if, if any legacy team's looking for a player, um, I know he's not playing legacy at the moment, or, or even pro. I, I think he'd be a good pick up. Um, yeah, the, the the other guys in the middle there. I think there's a couple of close games at the bottom, but um, I'm not mm -hmm. entirely sure what happened with KSW and Jammy's games, but like it's hero, like you can you can be, lose a sweep there, but um, yes. still ten po ten points in a loss isn't the worst, and they're they're sort of sitting in the pack. So um, I think both these teams can can expect to try and keep pushing for playoffs. But um, yeah, God, really really impressed with Genji. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Justin and I both have experience losing to Genji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel he's, he's played well, uh, at least the, the matches on stream I've seen of him. That's crazy as well. Is it, it Losing a ban in this meta in Hero, it feels like maybe one of the yeah. most impactful times or like formats ever to lose a ban, because you could just get swept by Rogue, man. Right? <laughs> that, that's crazy. Uh. How do you even beat Rogue in this scenario? Um, well, I mean, it's not, not the most polarized deck we've ever. That's like 55 and 60. You just, just win those favorable. Well, just, just be the better player. <laughs> Fair. Um, any final thoughts about Hero before we move into Legacy Gold? Oh, yeah, totally. Because even what you said, it's not like if he was preparing to ban Rogue. It's not even like he had a counter prepared or no. anything. <laughs> it's not even like he prepped some off meta thing to try to answer it. It's just, <laughs> okay, well, guess I got a win and I'm favorable. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um, awesome. So I will keep us moving on to Legacy. And we're going to start talking about Legacy Gold. Now, let me just know that I'm calling the right person. So, Chicken, why don't you tell us what's going on in Legacy Gold right now? Yeah, for sure. So, in first place with 75 points and a 4-0 record, we have Clownstone Academy. In <coughs> second with 70 points, we have Pod People. Then following right behind them is Defias with 67 points. 
Uh, and that kind of rounds up the top three. And then after that, there's a bit of a drop off in points with Fish at 55. Uh, Golden Showers at 49. Illidan's Death Knights at 48. The Stubbs at 45. And Not Justin at 38 points. Hmm. So before we hop into a match, I think there's one thing that everyone is asking themselves, and I'm going to ask Bone Master directly here. Is this enough to remove fraud people from Legendary? Uh, well, we've still got another week to play before we do another podcast about Legacy, but uh, we did end up having them as Golden Epic after the podcast last week, even though both Fish and I did have them as a legendary team, but uh, I would imagine that with one week to go uh, before the next podcast, if they happen to go to a 3-2 record, they're definitely not going to be a legendary team. But if they can get a full sweep this week, I think I might keep them in there. Nice. So set them a challenge. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at what happened to them, though, because they were dominant before. And to tell us about Bod people versus fish. We have Justin hopping in. Yeah. So uh, this was a match that took place. I scramble for my notes. My bad. Uh, so it's this was the Pod people's first loss of the season. Unfortunately, God people going down. I reached out to Hat to talk about how the the match went from their side. So I'm not the, obviously I didn't participate. Not the most familiar. Uh, and, and he just said, <laughs> Izzat is really good at Hearthstone. Uh, he, he sent me a replay. He called out this really sick tempo mag play uh, that Izzat did in Feldh versus Handlock, uh, where he just made our hat on the Handlock suffer, leaving up the 1-3s for several turns in a row before killing him, uh, tr triggering the mag and killing him in one turn from 20 without even playing Kurtris. Uh, so certainly a pretty, like, unusual high level line that oh huh. man, yeah <laughs> but most players wouldn't think of uh and Fair? So, yeah our hat was was happy he got it to five games though against uh such a good player uh and as well called out that sway day who has been had some struggles in previous seasons mm -hmm. and also uh, streams battlegrounds doesn't always focus on standard that she got a sweep and then they also had Zoroshio super sub in, who, <laughs> as the substitute, realized on the day of his game that he got back a positive COVID test, but still played anyway. Oh. and still won. <laughs> uh, nice. Um, well, not the COVID part's not nice, but that's <laughs> yeah. quite a performance. Yeah, yeah. So, again, like uh, Bone Master said before, 10 points in a loss is not bad. Looking back historically, normally you have to average about 15 points a week, depending on uh, the number mm -hmm. of teams making playoffs to make playoffs. So you don't want to get 10s, but 10s a lot better than, like, a 8 or a 7 or something if, if you get one forward. Uh, get going 2-3, certainly. certainly th th those will get you there, combined with wins. Uh, True. But yeah, on the other side, I, I spoke with uh, Steffi, uh, who said that mm -hmm. she was really happy to pick up her first win of the season, what she got uh, nominated in, in one player of the week for, sweeping Wicked Good. Uh, yeah, not just a win, but a sweep. Uh, and the craziest part about it, too, was that she won a Mozakiless Mozaki Mage game against Priest. <laughs> against How? Wicked Good on Priest. Wicked Good mutinist her Mozaki, but she just got double guild trader from pri double primordial studies and did a DIY Mally and got there with Burn anyways, apparently. Uh, nice! So. Um, that's the <laughs> kind of thing just... Mage can do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't see the replay, but just picturing that thing to happen, I'm a, <laughs> it's, it's not even, sometimes like most games, yeah. you go for the combo and you miss slightly, so your your opponent's like on 10 health, 5 health or something, and you can follow it up the future turn, because he, while going for the combo, you thin your deck a lot with like a big cram session or something, so like you can get the yeah. night chain going a little and kill him off, but no Mozaki the entire game? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds... I, I conceded on the spot, so good on Steffi. Uh, That's yeah, true. Yeah, good on Fish for getting, coming out with the win. Uh I mean, yeah. I would have thought pod people at 3-0 the season would have been slight favorites. I mean, they're, they're veterans of the league. Uh, but podcasting has only been around for about 20, maybe 25 years, whereas uh, Fish 
have been around. They developed in during the Cambrian explosion around 500 million years ago. So I guess they might have the slight experience edge there. Uh, so I guess pod people will have to be content with remaining undefeated <laughs> against against teams of humans. They they can't quite do it against the the aquatic uh, THL teams. That's fair. And this is quite the major win for fish, just putting them a, right in the middle of the standings where you want to be to make playoffs. Um, Chicken, do you have any thoughts, anything you want to add about pod people versus fish? Uh, lots of sweeps, pretty interestingly. Uh, I feel like Conquest is is a format where sweeps are generally less likely to happen than last year's standing. True. Uh, so it is interesting to see that there were three sweeps in the the three to five seed. Um, yeah, I don't really have any information on what the actual like decks w- that were brought from each side. But yeah, it is it is just kind of interesting to see that happen. Mm-hmm. I just want to note something, and I know this a lot, but this is a full rogue ban. Just no one wants to play against rogue. Really don't. Yeah, that is. Uh, I mean, who does want to play against Rogue? Um, I think a lot of people are taking some. Uh, I mean, some justified breaks from ladder right now, unless they're really trying to qualify for that that Masters Tour spot. Uh, because yeah. I mean, yeah, especially when you get uh, into up into higher ranks, it is just like I don't know, like seventy, eighty percent Rogues sometimes. Uh, depending on what time yeah. of day you're queuing, it's just it's just like what? Why am I playing this? <laughs> right. Um, I'll move us into our next match. So to make sure we end on time, uh, we are going to talk now about the return of the light showers. So Bone Masher, are the light showers back from their small hiatus from last season? Um, yeah, I, I think they might be. I think uh, we'll run through this week's match match first. Um, so Agent P's Golden Showers versus uh, Illidan's Death Knights, uh, the Tavern Talk face-off, uh, Geranium versus JR. Um, yeah, Agent PWE continues to struggle uh, in the one, going 0-4 uh, this season with a, with a sweep by Earl. Uh, Nails got the sweep on JR. Uh, Turtle uh, got the sweep on uh, Jespine. Uh, Pace uh, lost 3-1 to Raptor, HS, and bite-sized AC won 3-2 over Mighty Biz. I believe the final match was between Nails and JR, which is a sort of a rematch of, mm-hmm. of J- where JR beat him earlier in the season in Hero. And um, from what I, I got from JR, Nails uh, bought an interesting lineup. Uh, which completely uh, demoralized, <laughs> completely demoralized and destroyed him, um, and it was a pleasant experience. So, um, yeah, it was great to see yeah. Agent P's um, get their first win of the season. Um, they have had a really tough schedule playing um, Clownstone Academy, Defias, and I think it's Golden Wisps from Zelva. Um, so they have had a tough schedule, but I, I think. You know, with the points they've managed to pick up in losses, they're they're sitting well situated, only six points behind Fish here. Um, I could see them for for sure um, making playoffs still in gold, even though they're they're only one three at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin, anything you want to add about the Golden Showers versus Illidan's Death Knights? Yeah, I mean, Super Sub Turtle has been carrying the the Golden Showers team. He streamed his match. On email, email only mode versus just mine this week, so I popped in and watched it. And uh, maybe because he's a sub and isn't as invested, or maybe maybe because he's turtle. He was taking some pretty content lines, like uh, r- ramp through it versus uh, <laughs> just as soon as you get to ten mana, have a big hand, a full hand of cards, just ripping the yog <laughs> when he had many Bam. other options in there. Uh, but he was really hitting. <laughs> his, his yog was good. Uh, Fair. So his, 
This is uh, <laughs> an empty board, 10 mana Yaga. Got him survival the fittest and didn't like mill a million cards that didn't kill himself off. It, it, was, wow. it was pretty remarkable. Uh, so he, he somehow got there 3 0. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny to see players you know, win with unorthodox lines or stuff like that. Uh, just ha having, especially if people aren't enjoying the ladder meta right now, making sure to still enjoy THL. <laughs> oh, 100%. I think it's an important part of it, especially when the meta is kind of boring. THL has this interesting effect that since you're not just going to be facing Rogue, it can be a lot more interesting. Uh,. Chicken, anything you want to tell us about the Golden Showers versus IDK or about Gold Conference before we hop on to Red Conference? Um, yeah, not too much to go over for me. I do, I do want to say that, um, I don't know, I, I'm with Turtle here. Yogg rewards the faithful. <laughs> and the sooner you play him when he's, when he's ready, uh, the more you will be rewarded. So make sure to play Yogg as soon as possible in all of your games. Fair. Now, moving us to Red Conference, Justin, where is Team Just Win right now? What happened this week? Uh, they, they barely squeaked by. Uh, they were somehow top. <laughs> uh, the Justins were top of Red Conference at the end of last week. This week, narrow victory. Uh, so a more healthy victory by F2L had the uh, surpassed. Uh, but still looking 1-2 top of conference. However... Getting that first position is pretty important because uh, in the legacy format of three conferences of eight, where four teams make playoffs from each conference, that's 12 total co teams that make playoffs, so four of them get first round buys, those being each of the three conference winners and then the best placing third place team. Uh, so mm -hmm. <laughs> you'd much prefer to win the conference than to get second and only have a one and three out of buy. Even if yes. you're a strong team, just having that buy is, is pretty nice. Uh, decompress, take a week off, and also, like, any any given week, things can go poorly. You can get upset, whatnot. Uh, so, mm -hmm. like, expect it. Actually, we're playing each other head-to-head -head this week, so expect it to be a good match. Uh, nice. Justin's have probably had a pretty year. We, we, you can see it in the numbers there. We have had a pretty easy schedule so far. Pretty much faced all the, the teams in the bottom half there and none of the ones in the top. So F2L probably would be the, the favorites to go on and get that one seed. But hey, who knows? Still a lot of matches to be played. Uh, but yeah, True. behind us filling out the pack, Dad Legend, Life 2 l with the Led by Brudo. And then you have Everyone's a Winner, Chaos Theory, Serenite Pain Gang, and surprisingly, the, the Troll Owl team not doing so well this time. <laughs> Wallet Warriors Part 2 should have spent more money. Fair. Um... Now, let's take a look at our first match from Red Conference for the week. Justin, let's talk about your team. You finally came out of your PR management weeks, and the team barely squeezed by again. Um, it is a win, but a 14-13 against SBG. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I mean, it looked like we were going to be the first team in uh, two seasons to lose the Saturday Night Pain Gang when we got down 1-2. Uh, and uh, I wasn't around for most of the week, but apparently late Sunday night, the, the remaining two matches were, were narrow wins for the Justins. So we take those. Nice. But yeah, SBG put up quite a good fight. Uh, in yeah. particular, Dark Side with the sweep over Pokemon. I, I back Pokemon. He, Justin's a, a very good player. Uh, very smart, and uh, it's teammates in, in college to play Tespa with, uh, what's his name, with... Paper Ninja? Uh, Paper Ninja, yeah, very good player, and uh, it's also nice. friends with Alec Dawson, the former Hearthstone <laughs> game designer. So he's he's a very smart guy, he's, he's, he's learning the game well, but uh, you know, normally when you get swept, especially at the lower seeds, it's like uh, you, you messed up something a little bit. Looking through the replays, I, I really don't think he... He, he played all that badly. He just uh, faced an opponent who, who played quite well, which I think is pretty rare for the four seed. Normally, there'll be at least a few, like, blunders or, or something like that. But no, Darkseid uh, really just gave him not, not much of a shot. So well done to mm -hmm. him. Uh, and then, yeah, Clarity as well. I got mentioned earlier in the show, but that is Skirt Reynolds' first loss in either se series this season. He's 7-1 wow. and playing all his matches in the hero in the four seed. 
Uh, he wow. was on leaderboard as of like two days ago. Uh, he, another guy who's just really committed to learning the game and has done quite well. Uh, That's but, awesome. Yeah, carried from the one through three seeds, I guess. Uh, Justin, Justin, picking up the slack Sunday night to, to bring it home. Also, yeah, other Justin sent me some stats that are interesting. Uh, our team <laughs> went 0-5 on Hunter, <laughs> while their huh. team went 1-4 on Beast Druid. <laughs> interesting. So, uh, so, some decks that are pretty common right now, we're not, not quite working for us. Uh, probably Fair. more pulling up patterns from noise than anything else like if you're gonna lose matches you have to lose mm-hmm. with one deck uh so there, there's, there's probably gonna be some some overlap but uh still still interesting to see the <laughs> those patterns uh occur throughout oh and then the also other interesting thing is that not everyone banned rogue and not only that the among the two out of ten people who did not ban rogue they both won However, <laughs> Rogue was 2-0 on the series. <laughs> Both people who left it off won despite losing to it. <laughs> so, uh, Nice. Yeah. Um, Let's start 0-1 down, just win three out of the other four. Easy. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Bone Master, any thoughts on Team Just Win versus SBG? Uh, yeah, it looks like a, a close match with some, some close games in there. Uh, if uh, if Just Win can get their one seed to win a few more games, they they probably get themselves up to the top spot on the table. Mm-hmm. So true. <laughs> um, Chicken, any final thoughts on this match before we move on to the next one? Yeah, it's pretty crazy to see Skirt fall in his first match, though. Yeah, it was a close close match um yeah and as justin said hunter definitely having a rough go at it in this series um and yeah yeah from i i was looking at some recent ladder stats and yeah beast Rude's definitely fallen off a, a bit in win rate uh in the, the past few weeks i think people are mm-hmm. getting a little more accustomed to playing against it since it was um i, I mean it's not like an insanely new deck it's fairly similar to aggro druid from last expansion but there are definitely some differences in mechanics and how you want to set up your turn so i think um now that people are a little more accustomed to playing against it it's fallen off a bit and Mm -hmm. yeah it is it is a bit of a a reversal for team just win here usually getting uh carried by their criminally under pr lower seeds this time the the higher seeds finally picked up the slack and got some wins Mm-hmm. Now, Skirt loses one more match, he'll be back to double digit PR. <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> wow. Uh, now, Chicken, why don't you tell us about our second red match of the night? We have Dad Legend versus the team I refuse to say the name because I'm going to mess it up. Yeah, we have Bruto's team versus Dad Legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh Bruto continuing his winning ways in legacy uh going up to a 4-0 record with a 3-1 win over Zabe. Um Dad Legend getting the the wins in the 2 and the th- uh 2 through 4 seed uh which secure the win uh on the week and then Judo Chop getting the sweep over Haster, I believe. I'm mm-hmm. uh, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but uh yeah. Pretty interesting stuff. Mag- magnificent falling uh, in a three-zero sweep, which is, uh, yeah, pretty tough for F two or F two L or IF two L. But um, sure. yeah, D- Desharmo a pretty strong opponent as well. Yeah, I like and to yeah. see how Desharmo is now a two seed and seems to be doing well. Yeah, that's interesting because I believe before uh, Heat Shock was on. Uh, joined Desharmo's hero team. He was the one seed, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, having him in the two seed here for Dad Legend is pretty solid. Um, mm-hmm. And then Blue Spartan coming in as the substitute this week and getting the win over the substitute Itachi, actually. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. But yeah, a uh, bit of a sub-diff, you might say. Uh, and yeah. in an insane PR diff, too. 277 yes. versus 464. Uh, not an easy feat uh, going up someone that higher in no. PR than you. Not at all. Um, 
Justin, any thoughts you want to share about Dead Legend versus I've Too Well? I don't really know any more than Chicken said, no. Sure. Um, anything you want to say, Bone Masher? No, I just think it's a it's a sort of close match. Red Conference is probably the closest conference. Um, sort of maybe mm-hmm. except for the top two teams there. I think fourteen points between Dad Legend and uh, Wild Warriors Mark Two. Um, any of those teams, you know, they're all in the hunt. So um, both these teams picked up some points, but not not enough to to pull away from the pack. Um, True. Still, still lots to play for. True. Now. I'll move us to our final legacy conference of the night. We have Silver Conference. And to tell us what is going on with Silver Conference, Bone Masher, are the Zilfs still on top? Uh, the Zilfs are indeed still on top. Uh, so at the top of Silver Conference, we've got the Hot Zilfs, the champions from two seasons ago, with a 4 0 record on 79 points. Uh, Hearthstone Academy, 70 points. Uh, the Cooler, 64 points. Uh, APM on 59 points. Dirty Mike and the Boys, close behind on 56 points. The Cult and Golden Wisps, uh, a little way back on 45 points. And Standard Tier Shell Degenerates uh, make up the field on 37 points. Mm-hmm. So... Let's zoom into our first match. We're not going to talk about the Zilfs because we don't want to inflate Donde's ego. Uh, so we're going to start talking about HSA versus DMB. And Chicken, what happened over there? Yeah, so in the one seed, Hockey Boys was not able to play in his match this week. Uh, I know he was, looking, he was looking for a sub throughout the week. I think mm-hmm. originally he was trying to get Infinite to sub in, but... I don't, I think he didn't hear back in time, so he ended up going with uh, nine eyebrows as his sub, uh, which is de- definitely a little bit tough for nine. He definitely not accustomed to the one seed. I don't think I- I've never seen him playing the one seed before. He is mm-hmm. he did make his way up to the two on our hero team, but yeah, a, a bit sure. You know, I mean, he's definitely a really strong player in my opinion, but um. It is tough, like going up into the one seed against such a strong one seed like Sabretooth. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was that was a bit tough. He fell three one to Sabretooth there, but Hearthstone Academy did end up getting the win with the uh, with wins in the three through five seed. Uh, the Big Ted, Cherub, and Shu all getting wins for their team, uh, getting a, a pretty close uh, being. Oh, it ended up being a pretty close match, fifteen to twelve, and HSA getting back in the win column after their loss last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bone Masher, anything you want to share about HSA versus DMB? Um, yeah, it's uh, another two teams that are sort of you know up up around the top four in the conference. Uh, another close match, which is. Just shows how close uh, the teams are in this conference, um, and yeah, good to see Hearthstone Academy uh, getting back on the on the winning column, getting that three one record. Uh, my players there from last season, Charup and Schubacker, that we had at APM in the four and five. Good to see them uh, winning and and and, uh, and and keeping it on this season. So you know, if I've got a a second team in in this conference, uh, it's it's HSA. It's Nice to see those guys winning. Yeah. Um, anyone want to add anything else about HSA versus DMB before we go into our next match? Awesome. So, Bone Masher, let's talk about your team. We have All Points Matter facing standard THL degenerates and squeezing that one point win that we love to see here in HC. Yeah, so um, we came up against uh, standard THL degenerates this week. Um, it was a very close match. Uh, the, the ma- uh, we actually started off uh, cheesy Ted in the two, uh, lost to Dr. B- D-O-M- Dr. BOMD, uh, two to three, and two star Mako lost to Buzasaurus, one three, so we were down three points to eight. 
Um, and then, yeah, the Chosen Pie and Avi both come up big with uh, with sweeps in their matches over uh, Electric Sheep City and Mr. Python, uh, mm-hmm. which meant that we went into the last match, um, you know, tied to a piece, but but up up uh, eleven to eight. So a two three loss uh, was going to be enough uh, to still get the win for the week, even though we would lose three matches. And that's exactly what uh, Laughing Frog managed to do. She um, she actually went nice. up 2-0 in her match, so got the two points that we needed <laughs> to get the win. Um, but then um, I think maybe the uh, the foot came off the pedal then and pressure's off and, Fair. and yeah, Jerry, Jerry just came straight over the top and and, and swept um, the, the Fell DH, I think, got swept in that match. So, so yeah, the prophecy is uh, fulfilled. <laughs> All points matter. Um, you just got to win two matches and get some two threes and get some three O's and you can still get uh, a win in THL. Nice. Um, Justin, anything you want to say about this one? No. No. And any if anyone has any final comments about Legacy Silver or about this match before we go for a quick ad break. Awesome. So I'll bring us to our main screen. You can see most of our faces again. And tonight we have a very special guest who has competed with Ron for the commercial break title. And is going to reprise his role, assuming he is fine doing that. <laughs> I've been prepping all day for this. <laughs> I would love nice. More. <laughs> uh, ready whenever oh. you are, Justin. <laughs> hey there, Twitch viewers. Have you subscribed to Team Hearth League yet? No? Well, then make the day to be a league your... Oh, legend yourself. Well, that one doesn't quite work. We'll have to yell at Ron out of the script. <laughs> but make today the day to be a league yourself and subscribe to our channel. The subscription enables the THL team to help cover the various costs of operating our website as well as improve the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, you can sub to the channel for free. Subscribers will get a THL emoticon as well as a lovely THL chat badge. So hit that heart button, keep the notifications on to make sure you keep catch our broadcasting team live. We appreciate each and every one of you. Special note to our viewers, check out THL's other social media points of interest. Our website at TeamHearthLegend.com. Follow us on Twitter at THLHS. Join our Discord on Team Hearth League. And check out the THL PAL podcast for power rankings for all series wherever you find your podcasts. And then there's the true Team Hearth legend himself, Saku, who continues to post all our videos on our YouTube channel. Just search for Team Hearth League and have it uh, correct to Team Hearth Legends, because that's what the YouTube channel is still called, to catch <laughs> everything previously recorded. <laughs> you are, of course, watching us this on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Team Hearth League, or possibly on our YouTube channel in the future. And for all you THL fanatics out there, there are THL shows every single day of the week. You can't go wrong tuning in at any time for some amazing Hearthstone-related content. Now, back to the good part. Awesome. Um, that was great, Justin. You did great. Um, a little, little rusty, but we, we take this. You still got it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think soon we'll start having Bone Masher and Chicken. You two haven't had a chance to do the um, break, oh, no. bitch. <laughs> I have not done it either, so we're going yeah, to start we'll alternating. Yeah. I hope everyone is ready. Plus, I just put it in the notes and thought, maybe Justin will notice that he's doing this. Maybe not, and he'll just improvise. So we'll get to see some of the fun. Um, that said, yeah, everyone ready to hop into Pro Conference or Pro Series? Let's do it. Awesome. So we're going to start Pro with Black Conference. Um, aka Clownland, and Bone Masher is going to tell us how um, Murabi is handling Clownland. Um, yeah, so uh, in Black Conference, at the the head of Black Conference, uh, we've got Clowns reloaded on eighty one points, four and a record. Uh, eight points behind them is Avenging Prophet Murabi uh, on seventy three points with just that one. Uh, tie. Uh, everyone's a winner is in third place uh, on 60 points. Uh, we probably should be looking at the points per week, actually. 
uh, with the buys in yes. pro, but that, that's still the same order. So everyone's a winners on 15 points per week in third place. Uh, in fourth place, F2L is on 14.25 points per week. Uh, in fifth place, it should actually be Taggers on 13.67 yes. points per week, uh, followed by Faction on 12.25 points per week. Uh, and then uh, the bottom three are the same, Man Quicks, Multiple Wives, 11.33, Mr. Smite Side on 10 points per week, and Sheepies rounding out the conference on 8 points per week. That's, nice. Yeah, it's, it's definitely shaping up as uh, the land of the clowns here. Um, but APM are, are, are doing our, we're doing our best to, to hang tight with them. We haven't played them mm. yet, so that'll be a good test uh, the week that we do play them. I think it's coming up in about three weeks, so I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, yeah. Noticing a strong correlation between point or in, inverse correlation between points per week and average opponent strength. <laughs> there seem to be some teams that haven't <laughs> played the clowns yet and some that have not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah F2L and Faction have both had um, tough, tough schedules so far. Uh, Faction's yeah. played all three. Of F2L, Clowns, and APM, and Faction. Uh, so, um, and F2L has also played Clowns and APM. So uh, for those two teams to be sitting where they are, it, it, it bodes well, um, mm -hmm. as you can see with their average opponent strength and, and still being you know up in the middle of the table. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, certainly, certainly Clowns in first, but not quite running away with it, at least not yet, a APM making it close. No. Now... We have barely talked clowns matches just because they tend to win in such spectacular fashion that there's not as much of a debate of what happened. But we're going to take a look today at one of the clowns matches, and Justin is going to tell us about clowns versus F2L, which was a big deal match this week. Yeah, F2L came in uh, higher this week than they, they left it after getting 4 one by the, the clowns. Uh, not picking up quite as many points. Nine points in defeats, okay. Uh, there weren't many sweeps, even though they only won one of the matches. But yeah, I reached out to a few players to talk about this. Uh, if you remember in the pro <laughs> series in the Discord, there there are some some funny things going on uh, about this matchup. So N Nail said that he got this cool lineup from his buddy Pascoa. That's a bit off meta and. Uh, got there versus Rebob, trying to target the Fell Demon Hunter. Uh, and he, he was pretty happy with the win overall by, by a good margin against what the uh, team that he thinks is one of the better ones in Black Conference, which he proceeded to add is obviously the stronger conference because Black is stacked, so therefore F2L are one of the stronger teams in the, in the, entire, uh, <laughs> in the entire Pro Series. Uh, where Re Rebob mentioned that, oh yeah, the, the submission issues, uh, he did not mean to submit uh, Nightmare and DH and only two decks ended up rolling over, which kind of played perfectly into the lineup that Nails had brought in. Uh, so both him and one of his teammates had, had that issue as well. But he was proud that he, he took it to game five, despite the, the lineup disadvantage and being against a very good player. And then also happy that uh, his hero teammate Neji was, was able to get a win and hoping that that translated over to their hero team where Neji is 0-4, <laughs> by the way. Uh, Fair. And I, I reached out to Neji and he said, yeah, they, they felt pretty favored on lineups, partly because the submission mess up had pretty green spreads uh, and were able to capitalize on it and get a ton of points for what could have been a tricky week. So... Mm -hmm. uh, Zerk being the, the only casualty, uh, taking a, a win over Ka Kobe, Kels, Luna, to, to prevent a, a full clown dominance. Mm -hmm. Now, Chicken, anything you want to add about clowns versus F2L? Um, a little bit unrelated, but I think this will help uh, THL as a whole. Uh, Turtle has said that he will, in fact, sub on the spot if I say Clombo which is a new character added to Fortnite. So sorry to interrupt there, but it was for a sub. So Fair. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Turtle's not lying here. I hope so. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, another team gets goes up against the clowns and gets beaten to a pulp. <laughs> I think we're going to see. I mean, we've seen it other weeks. I think we're going to gonna see it uh, in future weeks. Um, you know, 
usually they 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 do tend to you know lose maybe one match out of the four pretty often um you know one person tends tends to mm-hmm. follow that uh this week it was kobe uh bank yuki um continuing his his wins after having to emergency sub out first week and then lo- losing the his his second week which was which was his first week but um after a little bit of a a rocky start he's he's kind of smoothed things out and yeah mm-hmm. nails and pascoa uh continuing their consistency uh and they also yeah. said that he wants to bring an even worse lineup next the next time they play which is not this coming week cuz they have a bye but the following week yeah. he wants to wants to try and bring something even worse than what he brought this week so we'll we might see something <laughs> extra spicy coming ooh i can't wait um Anyone want to share any final thoughts about Clowns Reloaded versus F2O before Bone Master tells us what's going on in Wildland in Pro Series? Awesome. So, uh, Bone Master, we had a match between Wild Teams in Pro this week, didn't we? Yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, yeah, everyone's a winner. Um, spearheaded by uh, the one and only Memnarch up against uh, Taggers. Uh, I might have to um, tread lightly here uh, with this one. Um, yeah, Memnarch took the took the win over Rice Bowl um, in a in a fantastic wild matchup there, three to two. Uh, just be, just been beat uh, lasagna three and oh battle tagger uh, got the win in the three for taggers three and oh over karate dom uh, solo jazz pulled out the win in the four over otters uh, three to two and seth for crest uh, one in the five three and two over Corden. Um, so yeah, sort of like the the, the two uh, wild teams, so to speak. Uh, I think there's more standard players, and everyone's a winner there. But um, yeah, close mm-hmm. match there. And um, I had wraps. I think at the beginning, the first her center, I said taggers were sort of my uh, wild card <laughs> team, sort of team that might surprise a few people. And um, they're they're there and about, but um, you know, one and yeah. two with a buy. Um, they probably would have liked to have won this one, uh, just to sort of push themselves up above everyone's a winner. But, but yeah, they're keeping themselves. Both of these teams are keeping themselves in in with a chance of making the top four in black. Mm-hmm. Um, chicken. Anything you want to share about everyone's a winner versus staggers? Yeah. Um. Not super surprising to see notably Battle Tagger get a, a sweep here. I think he's been the wild player that I've, or out of, out of the Taggers, he's been the player that I, I've run into the most on standard ladder. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do, I have seen him grinding, you know, in the top two hundred. Uh, and nice. yeah, he and I've played I've played against him a few times, and uh, he's he's played quite well. So um, it is not really surprising to me that he was able to get a win this week with a, a pretty convincing sweep from the looks of it. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations to battle tagger and to everyone's a winner for winning this week. Anyone wants to share any final thoughts about black conference before we hop into what I consider to be the best conference. Awesome. So, uh, Chicken, why don't you update us what is going on with Pink Conference? Yeah, so Pink Conference, Brushy Tuna still at the top of the standings. At You know, they're 18 points per week, quite impressive, at 72 points. Swagoy in second with 64. EU greater than NA at 57. No pros here at 56 right behind them. For the boys at 49 points. Uh, Popeye's Spicy Chicken Sandwich at 46. No pro, no pros here at 43. <laughs> <laughs> Make Love Not Warcraft at 42. And Poem Locked and Loaded at the bottom with 36. Uh, just want to point out, you know, for the boys, second in points per week. So not doing, not doing too bad. Got to... No, not at all. Got to defend... Uh, 
my honor a little bit here. Yeah, and we do our images are chosen by the teams that have the most points for we can not points. So that's why for the boys logo is considered the second place for our logos. Um I am not re-implementing half sheets to change the order to PPW. That's way too much work. So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, that said, let's take a look at some of the matches that happened in pink. Justin, why don't you tell us about Brushy Tuna facing Swagoy? I mean, why don't you tell me about it? I don't, I don't know really anything about this other than the scores, but it looks like uh, a lot of rogue bands from one team and uh, surprisingly few of our rogue bands from another. Uh, was Swagoy going for some counter rogue lineups or something, or just more scared of other things? Uh, I, I see, uh, <laughs> I see, Rushy Tuna ended up with a win. Uh, not not as convincing as some of their other ones have been, but yeah, what was your experience? This was a weird one because we started with Baze losing, and I don't know how Baze is one and three because it's Baze. She should not be one and three. And then um, the next player to play was McBannerface, who beat Edna Wise 3-0. And after that, I, it was my turn, and I thought Noglaka was going to win. I don't know. I was not confident at all. And somehow um, the Frost Nova minion is so good sometimes. Or, yeah, you can call it Frost Nova minion, right? Y'all know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. Make a... Sorry? Garden or Snowfall? Uh, I mean Snowfall. Uh, oh, no one. Right. I don't know what Varden is. Um, just that minion. It's just so much attack. And it goes face and it can get its job done. Plus, Mozaki Mage is still crazy. That deck should not exist. So that kind of happened in my match against No Glocko. Um, but it was a really good match. I think he played quite well. And we had the final day half go first, just closing early with a very strong match over Jared Bullitt, who um, reportedly said that he hates the current meta like a lot of people do. Um, we wanted Ron to win as well, but Ron um, decided that he was happy enough just gaining one point for us and we had done enough. So that meant Brushy Tuna had a 15-point week against Lagoy's 10. And yeah, we did not want to face Rogue. All our lineups were designed with we're banning Rogue from the start. No one wants to play against it. It's awful. Yeah, um, it seems like Brushy Tuna brought the good classes in Rogue and Mage. And, uh, you know, Rogue did not get banned for them. And they won their matches. So that something something to be said there, maybe. I wonder. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone wants to share any final thoughts on Brushy Tuna versus Sogoi before we move to our final match of the night? I think um, Sogoi, um, you know, still picking up 10 points against a highly fa fancied Brushy Tuna just shows that, um, you know, despite uh, the podcast's uh, preseason and continuing predictions, on on their chances in the pink conference that they're they're staying around and sticking around and 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 matching it against some of the the you know mm -hmm. perceived better teams and and um you know there's a lot of teams to try and fit into four places um in pink conference sure. so it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see um how it all shakes out by the time we get to the final round true that's true Now, assuming no one wants to say anything, I'll move us to our final match where Super Chicken is going to tell us about his match for the boys versus no pros here. Yeah, uh, any match against Heat Chunk's team is usually pretty interesting. Uh, the way they prep for, for matches is, is definitely quite unique. Um, they're, they're definitely a team that tries to kind of get a read on what you're going to bring and try to mm -hmm. counter that a lot of the time. Um, you know, maybe with the exception of some of the players, I think C-Mac brought a more standard lineup. But um, yeah, there was a bit of a, a game of chicken, you might say, uh, with me and Heat Shock on the submission night. Um, oh. Heat Shock 
was expecting me to well he had, he said he had two lineups prepared one was his rollover lineup that he was going to manually submit and then one to counter uh a different lineup if i if i resubmitted uh and he submitted with about 30 seconds left before the deadline oh um his rollover lineup and i submitted with 15 seconds left before the deadline uh <laughs> Uh, so yes. I ended up with a lineup that was quite favored over his. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I ended up taking the series. Uh, I wasn't. Definitely was not very happy with with how I played. Uh, I think I I'd, I definitely gave up more games than I should have, uh, mm-hmm. given how favored my lineup was. But I, yeah, credit to Heat Shock. He played played quite well. Um, nice. D- yeah, Dabs narrowly beating out Ufric. Dar- Darian falling three zero to Valdis. Um, I didn't have amazing matchups, but mm-hmm. he was also he was also not um overly happy with how he played that series. Sure. Um, and then C Mac taking it three two over Jayek, uh, which uh I I'm not sure what the exact order was, but it was I believe it was similar to that with which left us with Shep versus Abby last. Um, so Shep needed to go three zero or three one for us to to win the week. And yeah, he did exactly that. Um, nice. Clutched it out and was able to take it over Avi. And yeah, that gave us a pretty narrow win over a strong team and no pros here. Right? That is such a tight win. And I think it's really important for not to lose momentum because for the boys, I think they didn't do super well last week, if I'm not mistaken. They had a tie last week. So uh, yeah, we tied against. Uh, Justin's team, Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I mean, obviously, Popeye's has some pretty, uh, some very, very strong players. But I mean, we're we're always looking to to get a win every week. So, you know, getting a tie wasn't wasn't exactly what we wanted. But we're happy to be back in the win column. Yeah. Um, um, curious it, what happened with all the rogues. Yeah, I was oh. going to ask the same. But yeah, what, that what was, patch were you guys playing on? Uh, that was, yeah, that was definitely us kind of mind gaming ourselves a little bit. I think we, we were definitely worried about, you know, uh, you know, an, a lineup with uh, eight Rusrot Vipers in it or something coming from the other side. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know, maybe some, some armor vendors thrown in the mix there. So we were definitely a little bit wary of bringing uh, Rogue this week. Uh, and it did, it definitely ended up hurting us a bit because... Um, well, I think, I think Heatshock definitely had some Vipers in his lists. Um, overall, they weren't going too anti-rogue. I think it was more of just a general anti-aggro strategy. Sure. Um, so we did kind of, did kind of mind game ourselves a little bit here. And I think that, that ended up making the series closer than it, it could have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I can't see a good reason why... Not bringing Rogue would be bad. <laughs> um, any final thoughts anyone wants to share before we move back to the main screen? Any thoughts about Pro Series and Pink? Uh, Pink is the hard conference. Just want to put that out there again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, the cl- clowns are kind of dominating in black conference uh with with a couple other teams of course but um yeah just like from the two mm-hmm. matches we've shown to the teams i mean the matches are, are pretty close as we've seen and you know the teams really have to to battle it out to get those crucial points to secure playoff spots mm-hmm. awesome now bringing us back on the main screen here um, I believe that is it for our show tonight. We reviewed every series. Um, we are just spoiler alert next week. BPR is going to be back. Um, I like to wait five weeks so data is at least more representative. So we're going to start finding out who's actually, according to uh, Donde's algorithm, the best player in Legacy, Hero, and Pro, and the top 10 lists. But we're not done yet. We do have a checkout question as I thank you all one more time for being here with me tonight. It's always great having each and every one of you. Uh, my question is, which not so successful team so far 
is do you think is going to have its comeback starting now? And I'm going to begin with Chicken. So Chicken, which THL team that hasn't been successful so far this season you think has a good chance of a comeback? I think my pick would probably be uh, Agent PLE and the Light Showers. I think they sure. uh, they had a, a bit of a bounce back week uh, last week. Um, but I think they're, you know, I think they're a team that could kind of blow another team out with with a twenty a twenty point week at pretty much at any point. I think they could uh, really turn mm-hmm. their season around with any given week. Uh, I think. We're going to see, I mean, we did just see a bit of a turnaround last week from them. Um, I think the main issue for them, well, I don't want to say like the, the person's an issue or anything, but like, I think their biggest issue has been Agent PWE struggling to get a win in that one seed. So I think if, if PWE is able to kind of, you know, even just go even over his next few matches, you know, go get a, a match win here, here and there, I think uh, that team is really going to turn their season around. Nice. That's a good call. Um, I'm still shocked that team is not doing amazing. Um, yeah, they have to win at some point, right? <laughs> right? Um, thank you one more time, Chicken, for joining me tonight. Yeah, of course. Now, now Bone Master, first of all, thank you for joining me tonight. I think you, um, all, as always, bringing us that podcast and APM Inside Knowledge so what I want to ask you, Bone Master, is what team um, do you think is due for a comeback here? I'm going to go with uh, with Pro with my uh, with the Black Conference. Um, I think Faction, um, you know, they're sitting sure. in sixth place uh, with 12.25 points per week at the moment. Um, but they did face F2L, APM, and Clowns in their first three weeks, uh, and they had some close sure. results there. And, uh, they had a win. They got their first win last week, uh, similar to what Agent P's did in in uh, Legacy, and I can see them with four matches to go. Um, I think they'll they'll get on a, a bit of a winning streak and, and claim that last spot in, uh, in Black Conference for playoffs. So, um, yeah, I've got some... I've got some, I won't say money, we're not putting money on games, are we? But um, I've got some hopes for Faction uh, in Black Conference for Pro, for sure. Nice. Faction is an interesting choice. Um, thank you one more time, Bone Master, for joining us tonight. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, finally, last but never least, um, always just in time, thank you so much for joining us, Justin. It was Great having you. What team do you think is due for a comeback here? Yeah, I guess, honestly, if I had to make the hot take, it would be that all the teams at top, I think, are going to end very near the top. Uh, like, these are things have kind of been going as expected. I don't know. The teams that are strongest on paper have been winning, maybe with a, a few exceptions. Uh, sure. But... Uh, if, if I had to pick one, I would say that I'm not sure they're going to make playoffs or finish top, but I'm shocked that the uh, Owls Legacy team is in last place in their conference after they did they get first place or second place in their conference the previous season. And I know they had to, they're over the PR cap, so they had to like downgrade. Uh, but a lot of the players are in the same position as last season and the same seed, and yeah. they're just not doing as well. So I, I feel like that's some variance. Uh, from the Fair. Play. I'd be very surprised if they end in eighth out of eighth places in the Red Conference at the end of the season. So we'll see. True. I will note, I think LeBram is still due to a recovery. Um, this is the team that I think, if I were to answer this question, I've expected them to go up. They have great players. I think <laughs> at any moment they may start doing a lot better. So I'm still keeping my hope for LeBram in hero series that said thank you so much justin for joining us it's always great having you yeah thanks a lot for inviting me on yeah and that is it for us tonight i want to take another time to thank bone master super chicken and always just in time for joining me 
Um, thank you to all our viewers. Reminder, Tavern Talk is happening tomorrow. You can watch there. Um, they are going to do more predictions. Not our kind of predictions. Way more pre detailed predictions on each match. And there's going to be Wilding Out on Thursday. I know this is a very special show that Marty is preparing. There's a lot packed this time. And there are going to be matches on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, I believe. If you want to play on stream, well, not sure about Saturday. The other day is definitely true. If you want to play on stream, just post on stream matches. We are always looking to have um, matches on stream. And every level is welcome. Just post there. Um, the channel seems to be working, so you can always just post there. Tag one of us, and we'll do our best to fit you on one of the streams. But I believe that is it for us tonight. Have a great week, everyone. Win your matches, and we'll see you all later.